The image of an unmanned aircraft circling quietly above the South China Sea is no longer a distant scenario. The United States has already flown MQ-9A Reapers from Philippine soil during Balakatan 2024, including in a sinking exercise off Luzon. That exercise, for the first time, demonstrated how drones, long-range fires, and naval forces can be woven into a single operational fabric. Yet, what the Philippines is truly eyeing is not the older Reaper, but the navalized, next-generation MQ-9B Sea Guardian. The question is not whether Manila needs it, but how the country can realistically adopt it without overextending its limited defense budget and political bandwidth. The MQ-9B Sea Guardian represents a different league of unmanned aviation. It can remain airborne for more than 30 hours, integrate into civilian airspace thanks to advanced safety systems, and swap out mission pods in a bolt-on, bolt-off fashion. Unlike the MQ-9A, the Sea Guardian has been tested with maritime radar packages, electro-optical sensors tuned for surface targets, and even pods capable of deploying sonobuoys for anti-submarine warfare. With Link-16 connectivity and a new weapons capability package, the MQ-9B is less a drone and more a mobile ISR and strike platform in the sky. For a country like the Philippines, whose maritime awareness is constantly challenged by vast exclusive economic zones and gray zone operations from Chinese Coast Guard and militia vessels, having such a persistent eye in the sky could be a strategic game changer. The question then becomes, where would these drones operate from? The Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement has already given the U.S. and Philippine militaries access to nine sites across the archipelago. If the Philippines were to prioritize MQ-9B basing, three nodes stand out. Basa Air Base in Pampanga, already undergoing infrastructure upgrades, offers secure runways and support facilities close to Manila. Lalo in Cagayan, near the Luzon Strait, is an obvious forward operating point to monitor Chinese naval movements transiting between the Pacific and the South China Sea. Finally, Balabac in Palawan, on the southern flank of the West Philippine Sea, would provide coverage over contested shoals and maritime choke points. This triangle of sensors could give Manila for the first time continuous maritime domain awareness across its most contested waters. But drones do not win wars on their own. Their value lies in closing the sensor-to-shooter chain. With MQ-9B feeding real-time target tracks, Philippine ground forces could employ systems like the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System or the NMESIS Anti-Ship Missile Battery. During Balakatan, HIMARS units practiced striking high-value targets at sea. NMESIS with its naval strike missile mounted on a mobile JLTV chassis, has already been deployed to Luzon in an exercise context. Pairing these shooters with the Sea Guardian's long-range ISR data would allow the Philippines to impose real costs on an aggressor, projecting deterrence far beyond the country's shorelines. The drone becomes the eye, HIMARS and NMESIS become the sword, and interoperability through Link-16 ensures that U.S. and allied assets can plug seamlessly into the same kill chain. The strategic logic is clear. The challenge is cost and sustainability. Each MQ-9B system, with ground control stations, training, and support, runs into hundreds of millions of dollars. For a defense budget that has only recently begun to climb under the Horizon 3 modernization plan, such a price tag risks crowding out other priorities such as fighter jets, coastal defense radars, and Navy surface combatants. The smart pathway is therefore not to buy outright, but to lease or pursue contractor-owned, contractor-operated models. This is precisely how Japan started, leasing Sea Guardians to accelerate operational experience before committing to a larger buy. A similar arrangement for Manila would allow operators to gain experience, integrate with allies, and assess basing needs without the burden of a full procurement program. Financing is also not entirely on Manila's shoulders. 
The United States has pledged $500 million in foreign military financing to the Philippines for naval and air domain upgrades. A portion of that could be channeled into Sea Guardian infrastructure and training. Combined with Japan's expanding fleet of Sea Guardians, this sets the stage for trilateral data sharing networks. Already, Tokyo and Washington have signaled their intent to integrate maritime domain awareness across the first and second island chains. Plugging Manila into this network would multiply the coverage, providing a shared operational picture from the Senkaku Islands down through the Luzon Strait and into the Spratlys. Of course, every step Manila takes is watched closely by Beijing. The presence of U.S. drones operating from Philippine bases is guaranteed to trigger diplomatic protests, if not countermeasures, at sea. Domestically, President Marcos Jr. has already stressed that the Philippines will not grant additional new sites to the U.S. beyond the existing nine EDCA locations. That political constraint makes the case for drones even more compelling. They offer persistent presence without requiring the construction of entirely new bases. By focusing on improving existing EDCA infrastructure, extended runways, hardened shelters, improved command and control, the Philippines can introduce the Sea Guardian incrementally, limiting domestic backlash while still reaping strategic dividends. There are also operational risks. Drones are vulnerable to electronic warfare, to jamming, and to increasingly sophisticated Chinese counter-drone systems. The Sea Guardian's endurance is valuable, but in a contested environment, it will need escorting systems and robust communication security. The Philippines cannot assume that deploying a handful of drones will provide ironclad deterrence. Instead, it must think of them as amplifiers, extending the eyes and ears of its armed forces, but only as effective as the shooters and decision-making loops they support. The advantage, however, is undeniable. For the first time in its modern military history, Manila would not be flying blind. A Sea Guardian orbit from La Lo could monitor Chinese surface action groups transiting through the Luzon Strait. A flight from Balabac could track Coast Guard vessels shadowing Philippine resupply missions to Second Thomas Shoal. With data relayed via Link 16, Allied aircraft and ships could receive targeting updates in near real time. For a military that has often been reactive, this would inject initiative into its operations. Looking at a three to five year horizon, the Philippines could realistically aim for a small fleet of Sea Guardians, perhaps initially operated in partnership with the United States or Japan. The key is to avoid overstretch. Each step should be matched with parallel investments in training, maintenance, and the legal frameworks that govern unmanned flights in civilian airspace. Over time, as budgets stabilize and local expertise deepens, Manila could transition from lease systems to permanent ownership. The strategic payoff is larger than any single drone. By embracing the MQ-9B, the Philippines positions itself at the center of a trilateral web of maritime intelligence stretching across the Indo-Pacific. It strengthens its alliance with Washington, deepens interoperability with Tokyo, and contributes directly to a regional balance of power that discourages unilateral coercion in the South China Sea. For Beijing, this represents a subtle but significant shift. The Philippines is no longer a weak link, but a forward sensor node in a coalition that reaches far beyond its archipelago. The Sea Guardian will not decide the outcome of future crises in the South China Sea, but it will deny surprise, reduce uncertainty, and expand Manila's options in the face of coercion. That in itself is a powerful form of deterrence. For a country struggling to modernize its forces while navigating domestic debates and external pressure, the MQ-9B is less a silver bullet and more a force multiplier. And for its people, it is a signal that their nation is beginning to take control of its own maritime destiny one orbit at a time. If you want to see more in-depth analysis on how the Philippines is weaving American and allied technology into its defense fabric, make sure to support this channel.
Your engagement helps us continue to deliver independent, strategic commentary on the shifting balance of power in the Indo-Pacific.